Hi, my name's Juliet, and I'm going to talk to you today about Pilates. So I've been a Pilates teacher for over 20 years, can't quite believe that. And I also work as a teacher trainer. So my own classes, I've been running my own business for, as I say, over 20 years. I moved my business online at the start of lockdown, and I teach both online and face-to-face. -face. And I also run teacher trainer workshops and masterclasses through my business. And I joined Future Fit and I work as a tutor in the Pilates school. So offering support, marking your work, delivering webinars and, uh, and yeah, helping you to gain your Pilates qualification. So I want to talk to you about a few other things you can expect to come across as a Pilates teacher. So first of all, it's not easy. You need to do a lot of physiology and anatomy, and that will be a prerequisite for any course you do, any qualification you want to get in the fitness industry. But anatomy and physiology is a big one. And we look at posture types. You look at common um, postural issues. We're going to think about some of the more simple medical issues that we may need to address with regard to correction and adaptation. So, Remember that when you're a qualified teacher, you don't know who might walk through your door. You don't know who might approach you for a class. So it's really important that you get to the bottom of under, really understanding all the different posture types and needs. And as I say, getting to know your anatomy and physiology. And when you first start it, you may think that there's loads more there than would ever be relevant to you as a Pilates teacher. And maybe that's the case, but there is a qualification that you can't get around. The level three anatomy and physiology is an essential part of your learning and that takes a lot of getting through so i would say be prepared for that remember that you're going to be teaching groups of people so you need to get used to being able to be a presenter that's how i see my role i'm a presenter there's no point standing up in front of a group or a class if you're feeling down in the dumps if you're non-communicative if you're shy and awkward these people are paying money to, you know, to come and see you for you to deliver a class to them. So you will get lots of teaching practice during your course, but the more you can, you, you experience you can get in standing up in front of people and talking to people, the better. And just because you know it doesn't mean to say you can teach it. There's a big difference in knowing yourself and being able to communicate that information. So that is something that if you're not used to communicating, presenting, uh, to groups of people, that is something you will need to, to get more confidence in. But as I say, during the course, we give you lots of opportunity to practice that. One thing that possibly doesn't get talked about enough is setting boundaries. So generally people go into this industry because they like people, they want to help people. And that can mean sometimes we give a little too much of ourselves and you can find you get burnt out very quickly. And this is something you'll hear a lot in the industry when you start talking to your peers. So I would say be clear on your boundaries. So by the time you're out there teaching your classes, don't underestimate how much time and money you've put into getting where you are. Hours of your life that you've spent learning and studying and practicing, and obviously a big expense. So I'd say be careful then that you don't give away your knowledge and expertise for free. It can be a very fine line to find between supporting your clients, wanting to deliver the best possible service, but also not being taken advantage of. So, Start thinking a little bit about how you would set your boundaries. And it can be really difficult. And one of the things that we all find the most difficult is what we're going to charge and chasing people up for payment. But you're running a business. Just give some thought to that so that you don't find yourself compromised in a situation where perhaps somebody's not paying you. There are so many payment programs now. Online seems to be the easier way. And that can sometimes be a, bit of, a better way if you feel a bit uncomfortable about chasing people up or, or, you know, they haven't paid you and they should have paid you or whatever, sometimes an online platform can be a better way than grabbing somebody at the end of the class and also the online booking system. So this will also help you with regard to cancellations and as I say, people who maybe overlook paying. So generally the most common way that we run our classes is we do them in blocks of four, six, eight, ten weeks. Somebody's going to pay you for that block of classes 
and then you may have a break or you may run straight into the next block. I would recommend that you have basic T's and C's, payment expected by this date, one class only, no cancellation refund or however you want to do it. Now, what you can do is go online and look at other Pilates companies, businesses, see what they're doing to give you a little bit of idea and then obviously tweak it to suit it as to how you want to run your business. During your learning with FutureFit, we talk about the different ways to teach. We talk about visual, audio, demonstration, and hands-on correction. And this is also a very useful tool for you if you're not able to physically teach. Now, I myself, over the years, I've had a knee operation, I've had a hip injury. There are times when I cannot physically do the exercise, but I still need to deliver my classes. I can't afford to not run my classes. I can't afford to not retain my business. So being able to verbally teach, use visuals, but also think around that. Maybe you're, maybe you're um, going to have a baby and there's going to be a period of time when you're, you know, it's not safe for you to demonstrate the more challenging exercises. So perhaps there'll be somebody in the class that's very happy to come up to the front and be used, you know, be used for you to get that person they're doing the exercise so that somebody can see the demonstration but this is something that I know worries people is what if I can't do the exercise you don't have to be able to physically perform every single exercise but you do need to know how to teach it so if you can break it down clearly explain it give visuals help people to see it in their mind's eye and perhaps ask somebody to demonstrate it for you then that's completely acceptable. There's no need for you to do every exercise. And as I say, that can be a useful tool for if there's any reason that you're not physically able to perform in the class. If you found this video interesting and helpful, I hope you have and found it informative, then why don't you subscribe to our YouTube channel as we're going to be posting lots more content like this in the coming months.